I know that from Dr. Seuss. I think I'm gonna feel extremely minute next to an elephant, very small. I look forward to it, being humbled in that way. Bangkok. The Thai name for this place is City of Angels, like where I've come from, Los Angeles. But there, the similarities end. I've come to Thailand to fulfill an ambition I've had since I was a child. To come face to face with my favorite animal, the elephant. This hot and dusty city feels like the wrong kind of jungle to find an elephant. And yet here in Bangkok, they are everywhere. It's a country where Eastern beliefs and Western technology live side by side. A weird mix of ancient and modern. These elephants are beggars, reduced to scratching a living on the streets of Bangkok. But the elephant I've come to find is a world away from these poor creatures. The trouble is, it's one of the rarest animals on Earth. And I'm told that they are almost impossible to find. Magical, mysterious and highly revered, the white elephant. <whistles> Thailand is a country where tradition and ritual are still important and part of everyday life. Historically, every king of Thailand had to own a white elephant. It was seen as a symbol of his divine right to rule. Without one, it was said that his kingdom would fall. I've heard if I make a gift of gold to Lord Buddha, it will bring me luck. And I think I need all the luck I can get. Only one in a thousand is a white elephant. It's the holiest of creatures, said to make the rains fall, bring prosperity, power, and good luck. A white elephant is an elusive and subtle concept. Unlike this statue, it's not even white. If I'm gonna learn to recognize one, my first step is to get to know the Thai elephants a little better. So I'm going on a blind date. He's 70 years old, and his name is Bun Chu. It was the filmmaker's idea that I be a blindfolded person encountering an elephant for the very first time. That's why I'm standing here blindfolded. Oh, God. Elephants use smell and touch to learn about each other. So we're meeting on equal terms. <gasps> oh, my God. <laughs> uh, where is he? I think it's like to be that big. Exposed and a little defenseless, I think, if you had that much girth to uh, defend. It's almost like a pineapple, but worse. Cold in a funny way, really wrinkly. Jeez. It's very, very smooth. I happen to know it's white. That's how much I know about elephants. Wow, I can feel how strong this beast is, man. It's fierce. Can Boonch you smell my fear? Oh my god! I cannot believe how big this animal is. And so strong. You just can't get over how strong this animal is. Or how hairy, truthfully. The only experience I've ever had like it is standing in enormous waves. Because he has this way of just kind of leaning. And there's just so much mass and bulk. 
size is, of course, very relative. I feel enormous around my son, powerful. And I feel the minuscule, powerless, small, very small, and, you know, certain people's company or, you know, around situations that uh, I'm not familiar with, things like that. Well, apparently I'm 2,000 times bigger than that mouse, and um, this animal here is 100 times bigger than me. I imagine this is what it would be like to, like... The elephant has gas. I swear to God, I think that's what it is. This is what I love about elephants. They are full of surprises. I've found some who've become artists. Although elephants have limited eyesight, they seem to have a strong sense of form and color. But I wonder what they think they're painting. Is it a still life or self-portrait? I suppose only they know. But it's more than just a party piece. These paintings sell for hundreds of dollars in New York and London, and it's a way that these elephants can earn their own keep. It's a new twist on an old tradition. As I was to find out. Elephants have always worked alongside the people of Thailand, both in warfare, the king had thousands of fighting elephants, and in peace, helping to build the country by using their strength to move timber. Conservation centers like this one keep the old traditions going, and the elephants seem to like going through these ancient rituals. Owning one of these powerful and versatile machines brought wealth to the family and was seen as a status symbol, just like driving a Mercedes today. Each elephant has a mahout, or personal keeper and driver, and they devote their lives to each other. Being a mahout has always been an honorable tradition, passed down from father to son with pride. An elephant can learn about 40 commands and carry out instructions with absolute precision. But this is probably the last generation of trained elephants. In 1989, logging was banned to save the forests, and suddenly mahouts and elephants were out of a job. Now the future of this amazing creature hangs in the balance. Sadly, it's difficult to return domesticated Asian elephants to the wild, and experts are fighting hard to find new ways to stimulate the elephants and keep them healthy. Whatever the solution, man's special relationship with the elephant may never be quite the same again. I am fascinated by the intelligence of these creatures. There must be more going on in that huge head than you'd guess. Well, I think that there's a sort of unobstructed consciousness in animals that's curious, always curious to me. And apparently in the elephant, that's sort of hyper true. They're able to grieve. They involve themselves in retribution. The elephant knows a lot. The elephant is hyper aware okay. and really smart. It reminds me of looking in the eye of a whale. Not that I've ever done that, except in the Museum of Natural History. Very peaceful. They say about elephants that they never forget. My feeling about that is it would be horrifying. I mean, I, I'm happy to forget a lot. Let's face it, you know, you really want to live a peaceful life. And if you remembered everything, how peaceful would you be? I don't know. It's just the next essential question I'm posing now to the audience. I can't tell if he's bored or not with me. Standing next to Bunchu, I decide to practice my skills at identifying a white elephant. I'm told there are seven signs to look for. The body hair should be almost white. Yeah, maybe. The toenails would be white, much whiter than these. A white elephant's skin should be pink, more pink than Bunchu's, and its eyes almost white. 
The roof of its mouth should be a lighter color than this. The final difference has to do with the color of its genitals, but not on the first date. I'm just hoping I'm not going to be sat on. It's my dream not to be sat on by this oh. elephant. Oh, boy. In Thailand, they say it's good luck to walk under an elephant three times. It's worth a try. You don't need to run. Yes, I do. <laughs> okay, so now I have some good luck. God. <laughs> I'm headed north, deep into rural Thailand. Of course, there was a time before the railway when elephants might have taken me there. But the train brought industry and with it technology, signaling the end of man's reliance on the elephant. Feels like the real Thailand. Paddy fields, tiny villages, and temples. This used to be elephant country, but not anymore. Now less than 1,500 wild elephants survive in the remaining forests. Today, nearly 4,000 working elephants are out of a job, and now the elephants are relying on us to find them new roles. Some hoots in the mountains further north think they might have found a white elephant. She lives in a place where only an elephant can go. So to get to see her, I have to find someone who can teach me how to ride one. I'm at a Mahout training school outside Chiang Mai, which trains people from all over the world and keeps the traditional skills alive. Today, one of their elephants is going to help a rookie like me learn how to ride. Hello. Hello, I'm Meg. Yeah, I'm Persop. Persop? Yep. You are this elephant's mahout? Yeah. Hey, uh, What's her name? Pum Pum. Pum Pum? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been with this elephant? More than yeah. 10 years. Uh-huh. Right. More than 10 years? Yeah. How would you describe her personality or her? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, you, you can do like this. It's, it's like human, Meg. When they're happy, they just uh, have a playfulness. Uh -huh. First, they swing the tail up high, and the ears of the wrap, wrap, Slap? wrap on, wrap on the time. Oh. Right, right. Uh huh. Right. So and this is normally how she uh, drinks water. Oh yes. Uh, she uh, can drink about 120 liters a day. 120 liters uh -huh. a day. Right, right. If that's not enough, elephants eat up to 300 kilos per day. It would take a human months to get through the same amount of food. Or put it another way, it's like feeding a family of a hundred who are hungry all day long. Okay. <laughs> that's why you have to make very big decisions to be a mahout. <laughs> I have to be with her all the time. Uh -huh. It means that I have to make another marriage. If you decide to be a mahout, you may have to make another marriage with the elephants. And then do they listen to what you say, or do you do oh. things with your feet or your knees, or how do you...? I, I, will, I, will, I will put her on duty right now. Well, I'm not, <laughs> not rushing you, man. Okay, that's fine. But I'm... <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Ben, 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 Ben. Ben, uh, ben, ben, ben. That, now, what is that sound that she's making? Does it mean she's oh, hurt? Oh, she's or? Uh, positive responding. That's a say, positive yes, response. I'm happy. I believe you. Yeah, if oh, you that have was that a big sound. smile coming from yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, elephant. I will go to say, they're kneeling down, okay? Okay. Okay. Map long. 
แมปลงลงดีโอ้ไม่แมปลงกัดแมปลง that's it Oh. Okay. And when you go down, step on this. Okay, Hold don't let ear. her get up until I'm on there. Okay, sure, sure. That's my command to you, time. mister. Okay. Okay. Hold the ear first. Hold the ear here. Uh, I There's can't hurt her with my hiking okay. boots. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Hold the ear. Hold the Hold ear, the ear here. Right. Yeah, like right. this? Okay, jump. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Always hold the ear. Always hold the ear here? The standing position. Hold the ear, right. Oh, oh, oh. Look, okay. Yes. <laughs> I cannot believe my life at this yeah, moment. Yeah, that's fine. That's very good. Oh, you have a good balance, you know. Oh, really? Yes. I'm yes. happy to know that. Yeah. What shouldn't I do at this moment? Okay. <laughs> If you want no to kicking. go, you say bye. No, I don't okay. want to go. Okay. <laughs> so you want to stop, you say how. Okay. How? When you say how, you wrap your leg. Okay. You say how. How, and, and, I, and I keep my, and I squeeze her head. Oh. No, no, no. The, no. No, the, 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 the neck. The neck, okay. But my, my knees are like right behind her ears. Is that the right place? A little bit up. A little bit up, okay. Yeah. Well, that okay. feels kind of better. Good. What's weird as opposed to being on a horse, you're used to having like a front end. <laughs> There's no hood. You're just right on the very front of this thing. It's like sitting on a gigantic moving mountain. You can feel the bones yeah. Of the shoulder of this beast's shoulders under your butt, the strongest ear muscles that you can feel with your knees. I think if she flaps too much, I might go flying off. But apparently, no one else is worried. And um, I'm always struck by the hair on these animals. It's so weird. It's really strong and bristly and invisible to you, but you can feel it on my butt, right through my pants. Okay. So I should put my feet here first. Yes. Yes. And hold on to the ears. Yeah. Oh, is my foot going to go in her eye yeah. or anything horrible? No, 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 that's fine. Okay. Hold the ear. Waiting until you hook in the lowest position. What? And you say tag long. Hold the ear. Hold the ear. Hold the ear. Okay. Tag long. Tag long. Tag long. Tag long. Tag long. Tag Yes. I think it's low. Whoop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good landing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she looks humiliated. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. You look something like Oh, what a kiss. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm beginning to understand the close relationship between mahouts and elephants. They really are devoted to each other. Where does this dependence on each other come from? I know as a mother I have an unbreakable bond with my son. Does a mother elephant feel the same way? I wonder if their sense of family is as important to them as it is to us. To find out, I'm traveling deeper into the Thai jungle to a nursery where they have had success breeding elephants. I'm wondering if we have more in common than we realize. We both suckle our young. Girls have babies from 16. Boys leave home in their teens. We're fully grown by 20, go bald at 30, well, boys anyway, reach our working prime at 40, retire in our 60s, and live beyond 70. But there's more. Like us, elephants are emotional creatures that form strong bonds and mourn the loss of loved ones. And that includes their mahout, who stays with them all their lives. This is um, really the first group of elephants I've seen, and um, uh, it's a pretty formidable ensemble. Let me just put it that way. It's really, they seem to be kind of in constant touch with each other. They're making some sound, which is a really, really low grumble. It sounds like a very angry growl, which I'm assured it's not. Elephants communicate by using around 30 different sounds. They each have their own ID rumble, like a name. But other sounds are used to greet friends and say, come on, let's go, or in my case, keep your distance. I don't want to turn my back on this elephant. 
but I'll go over here. Um, apparently elephants live in uh, um, matriarchal societies. And they, uh, and, and the girls always stick together. This elephant with the pink ears is that little one's mom. This is a sort of a good, close female friend who hangs out and uh, helps with the baby. And they'll stick together um, their whole lives, is what I'm told. Whereas, uh, I guess, in their late adolescence, the little boy elephants go out and roam and roam and roam and roam. You keep roaming. Um, and so I guess if you see a herd of elephants in the wild, they're primarily female, unless there's a little boy or someone's mating. And it's mostly girls. I hope they take me as one of the girls. Um. <laughs> Wherever that baby goes, one of them follows in some way. And there is a part of the body of the aunt or the mom that's always touching the baby. So that baby is safe. I'm told you, the only place I don't want to be in this whole entire field is between the mom, the aunt, and that child. So, sort of fiercely protected. An elephant pregnancy lasts for around 22 months. That's a welcome difference between us. But like us, the babies are born with relatively undeveloped brains and have to learn all the social and survival skills from their moms in the first two years of their lives. Until then, they are constantly protected by a moving stockade of legs. You really do get the idea that if any of these elephants got pissed off, Can you hear that? I mean, can sound even pick that up? That's amazing. Elephants talk to each other all the time. The deep, low jungle rumbles can travel up to 12 miles. When you're standing right beside them, you can almost feel the rumbles going through your body, but most are too low for us to hear. If you speed up the rumbles 10 times, then this is what it sounds like. Elephants are vegetarians. For choice, they eat bananas, bamboo, melons, and sugar cane. An elephant is constantly hungry. I'm told that these elephants eat 18 hours a day. They eat for 18 hours. The dexterity of that trunk is so incredible, even in that little 11-month-old. An elephant's trunk can weigh up to 300 pounds and contains more than 100,000 individual muscles, whereas the whole of the human body has just 639. That's why the trunk is so versatile. It can act as a hand, a spoon, a water siphon, and it can be a lethal weapon. Yet its tip is 10 times more sensitive than our fingertips. And the little um, five-year-old grabbed my hand. And I tell you what, that's a powerful grip. This baby can't figure out how to work that uh, trunk of his. Did someone get this child some coffee? God, that's so sweet. Oof. I've broken the golden rule. I got too close to the baby, and they're just letting me know that that's not okay. They may look sweet, but this is a sharp reminder that they are still wild animals and dangerous underneath. They could kill me in an instant with their trunk, tusks, or feet, 
Only a trusted mahout should get this close, and I think they're telling me it's time to go. Hundreds of years ago, elephants dragged stone and timber up this mountain to help build one of the most beautiful temples in Thailand. I'm climbing the 300 steps to continue a Thai tradition that may just help save some of the forests. Every young male in Thailand is encouraged to become a monk for a few years, to take time out. I'm not sure why Buddhism attracts me. Perhaps it's because it respects all life on earth, no matter how great or small, and reminds us we all depend on each other. Buddhists believe elephants to be wise and sacred animals, but the white elephant is the most sacred of all. They were present at the Lord Buddha's birth and carried Buddha's soul while he searched for enlightenment. I've brought with me some traditional robes to be blessed by the monks. In Thai tradition, if a blessed robe is tied around a tree in the forest, then that tree will forever be seen as sacred and no one will dare cut it down. For centuries, travelers have stopped off at this temple to receive spiritual and physical refreshment. I've needed this small moment of peace and calm because soon I'm moving on to the most demanding part of my journey, riding on the back of an elephant up into the mountains. I'm still a little in awe of these powerful creatures, and I have one more chance to get to know them better before my trip. Washing is a daily ritual. Mahouts like to spend at least two hours a day in the water with their elephant. Oh, you must love that, huh? One hour scrubbing each side. It's also an important bonding time for them. The elephants love the water. It gets rid of dust, ticks, and mites, and enables the mahout to inspect any wounds on the elephant and check its feet. Elephants don't actually sweat, I'm told. They'd lose too much water. The skin on her ears is paper thin and a very delicate part of her cooling system. I'm worried about scrubbing her too hard, but she does seem to enjoy it. This is such an enormous animal, I can't believe it. seems to like it a lot because when he flaps his ears, that's apparently a good sign. That mahout over there is cracking up. I don't know what's so funny. What's so funny, mister? This elephant's getting very clean. Ooh. Elephants feel very vulnerable lying down, so they really have to trust their mahout. The elephant's skin is twice as big as it needs to be, and this increased surface area means increased heat loss. The oversized baggy suit is a giant air conditioning unit. Water trapped in the folds of their skin slowly evaporates to keep an elephant cool long after a bath. Did she spray herself?
Wind it up again, mister. Oh, I'm gonna get out of the way. He's gonna spray me next. <laughs> I've arrived at a camp for injured and ex-logging elephants run by a woman called Lek. Hi. Hi. What are you doing? I just do the medicine for the elephant. The medicine for the elephant? Yeah, this is made from tamarind. These are like giant vitamin pills for elephants made from tamarind, a medicinal fruit, and filled with salt. And what does the tamarind do for them? Uh, Lex elephants often arrive in poor health and need a great deal of care. How many elephants, elephants do you have here? I have elephant here, it's about 42, including that one, it has both eyes, blind. That's a blind elephant? Yes. Is he or she coming with us on this trek? Yes, she will. Who's going to ride the blind <laughs> How does no, a blind elephant no, get up a mountain? No, the she, uh, she Apparently, she uses her trunk to feel her way up the path. Incredible. This is the final stage of my journey. I'm going up into the jungle to try and find the white elephant I've heard lives up there. It's now time to put everything I've learned to the test. Okay. Okay. Oh. You're comfortable? Yeah. We're going on a trek. I don't know how many miles, I don't know how many Ks. Basically, I don't know where we're going. But that's all right, because I'm on an elephant who does. The first obstacle is the river. The mountain water is Freezing, as my poor Mahout found out. Is it cold? Okay, go, go, go. Don't say how anymore. what an inexperienced elephant rider puts her mahout through. And I think in the next few days, we're going to have to be friends. I've already abused him so violently in the river. What will happen? get like a perspective of what this head looks like from my point of view. You gotta get that because it's just crazy. Black has established a sanctuary here for the ex-logging elephants in which they can roam free with their mahouts. That's not where we're going to be sleeping tonight. Elephants never flag. Amazing considering that they weigh four tons apiece. In a lifetime, an elephant will walk the equivalent of 14 times around the globe. This is beautiful here. God. Their huge, spongy feet act like giant shock absorbers. Inside this elephant is a prima ballerina waiting to get out. Delicate. She can tiptoe her way through these tiny, tiny little pathways, rocks, mud. She's on her toes, they tell me. You know, these elephants really basically walk on their toes. And I believe it, because it's impossible that these enormous animals could be threading their way through the jungle like this. <laughs> After this jungle trek, the nutcracker. Oh, 
I think she spotted some bananas down there. Oh, uh-oh. Yeah? The elephant seems like it just wants to go down that ravine. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Hey, oh, hey. Mister. Hey, hey. Oh, boy. If I knee her behind this ear, will she uh, pay attention and go the direction you want? I could help you, maybe, Mr. Mahout. I imagine that this... I'm not going to interrupt that. Incidentally, each day an elephant makes enough methane gas to fuel a car for 20 miles. Do you see how funny this hair looks? It's really funny, a little obscene to me. It might be what it's like to ride on a fruit bat. That was very small. We've been going for five hours, but it feels like 10. The view from up here stretches all the way to Thailand's northern border with Burma. I don't know about the elephants, but I'm exhausted and glad to arrive at the Mahout's mountain camp. So, here we are in a Mahout camp after a long, hot, sweaty journey up the mountain. And um, this is where we're gonna spend the night with Mahout's. Cook some dinner, put up some mosquito netting, reapply the DEET, spend the night. Nice sound, those wooden bells, huh? Listen to that. It's incredibly loud. For what reason, I don't know. No, the jungle is not peaceful. Um, <laughs> even though I just sacked out, I was just asleep for I don't know how long. I don't know, I sat down on a piece of wood and fell asleep. Peaceful. The elephants have just wandered off to feed. You really hardly know they're out there. I don't understand how it can kind of function as quietly as it as it functions here. Really, if you if you turn your head, the elephant can can just walk up right behind you without you even hearing it. I've heard that some elephants even plug up their wooden bells with mud so they can creep around undetected by their mahouts. <laughs> Sneaky. I was looking forward to seeing some snakes. Not actually looking forward to it, but anticipating it, and nothing. Um, what, I, what I've seen a lot of are ants, and heard a lot of mosquitoes. The most dangerous animal in the jungle is the mosquito. And it's getting to be dusk here in northern Thailand, and uh, that's where my mind is, on the mosquito, the mighty mosquito. It was time for bed. Elephants only need about three hours a night. I'm gonna need a lot more. Oh! Ow! It's, I don't really know what time it is. I think it's, uh, I think it's about six in the morning. And um, I'm wondering if that's from last night or, or that's breakfast. I'm not sure. Um, I spent the night in, in, uh, in the hut over there. <laughs> and I slept like a log. I have to be honest, I slept for about nine hours straight. And right now the Mahouts and everybody are making breakfast. And um, the elephants are eating breakfast. They're probably exhausted. They've been roaming around all night eating. I mean, it's got to have taken its toll. It's a pig's foot. It's a pig's foot for breakfast. <laughs> oh. Really, you'd have to be a lunatic to live my life. I hear the mosquitoes around. There's a lot of mosquitoes around, actually. But I am so slathered with chemicals. I'm so grateful for that technology. The elephant has um, his own technology. He's, uh, he's sprayed himself with dirt, soil, 
and leaves to protect himself from the early morning malarial risk. No dopey Dumbo, that elephant. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Please forgive me, whoever's watching this show. Please like me anyway. <laughs> or don't, do whatever you want, but anyway. <laughs> Still no sign of the white elephant I've come to find, so the Mahouts go out to search the forest. In the meantime, I've brought my sacred robes to tie around the trees. Thank goodness there are projects to save the remaining forests in Thailand, and there are places for the retired elephants to live out their lives in peace. I always knew that coming to Thailand to find a white elephant would be difficult. The fact that it is an elusive, mysterious, and romantic creature was part of its appeal. But my search for a white elephant and everything I've learned along the way has turned out to be the journey of my lifetime. So I'm not too disappointed that it continues to elude me. Suddenly, I hear a wooden bell and there up ahead is an elephant that immediately looks different than the others. Could this be the white elephant they told me about? prehistoric looking and much paler than any I've seen. I've been told I should know when I'm in the presence of a white elephant and this one certainly seems special. To me, she does appear to have many of the right characteristics. Pale skin, light-colored toenails, white hair on its tail, eyes that are pale and rimmed with white. Very auspicious moment. Got some thunder, too. Um, just got very, very still. representative of His Majesty the King of Thailand can decide whether she's a true white elephant. So for the moment, she's free to live in this beautiful mountain haven. And what better place could there be for an elephant to live? Well, there is perhaps one place. The Royal Elephant Quarters at the King's Residence in Bangkok. And finally, the permission has come through for me to visit. In a lavish pavilion in the royal palace lives His Majesty the King's special white elephant. And I am one of the few people to be allowed to see him. A plaque bears his full name. Most auspiciously significant elephant born into the highest family of all elephants. He is absolutely pure and has all the auspicious characteristics to bring great prosperity to the kingdom of Thailand. No doubt about this one. amazing creature I've ever seen. The 
birth of a white elephant is a chance combination of genes. It's so rare, it's seen as a miracle and a sign of the king's divine right to rule. This elephant's long, crossed tusks are one of the most highly auspicious features of all. As I watch this magnificent creature, I realize that there is more to a white elephant than the color of its hair, toenail, skin, eye, and tail. Because this white elephant carries itself with the assurance and dignity of royalty. we're always searching for physical proof that seeing is believing. Seeing this animal is one thing, but being in its presence feels absolutely awesome. At the start of my journey, it seemed a little far-fetched that one single elephant could hold so much power. Finally, I can understand why the mighty white elephant of Thailand has captivated people for centuries. May its power help and protect the elephants of Thailand forever.